Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of the Launch Buddies podcast. I'm your host, Darian, and I'm joined by my incredible co-hosts, Barb and Andrew. How are you both doing today? Hey, Darian, I'm feeling fantastic and ready to dive into today's topic. Barb, I couldn't agree more. Today, we have a special focus on our supported employment journeys, where we'll be sharing our experiences and insights with our amazing buddies. That's right, Andrew. Our buddies are at the heart of everything we do, and today we'll be exploring two important aspects, how we got our first jobs and what we would need from a job coach to help us with getting or keeping our next jobs. It's an important conversation, Darian. Our first job experiences are unique and shape our understanding of the working world. And having a job coach who understands our needs and supports is crucial to our continued success. Absolutely, Barb. And through our stories, we hope to inspire and empower others who are on their own supported employment journeys, sharing our triumphs, challenges, and the invaluable support we receive will shed light on the path to self-determination and self-advocacy. Said Andrew, our goal today is to provide a platform for open and honest discussions, fostering a sense of community and understanding. We believe that together we can break barriers and create more inclusive work environments for individuals with disabilities. So get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and gain practical insights as we embark on this discussion with our buddies. Their stories are filled with courage, determination, and resilience. And remember, this podcast is not just for us. It's for all of you out there who are seeking or providing support, guidance, and motivation with supported employment journeys. We're here to share, learn, and grow together. That's right, Andrew. So buckle up and get ready to launch into an enlightening and empowering conversation. Let's kickstart our discussion on our supported employment journeys. We're going to switch gears here to Koa. And I'm so excited to see you today, Koa, because I had a chance to see a YouTube video of a graduation ceremony. And I knew that last week you were preparing for an MC position that you did for the ATI Adults Transitioning to Independence Celebration, the program graduation. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? It went really good. Oh, it, that's good. It went well. And can, can you tell us a little bit about all of the different things, the setup, what, how you were preparing for it, and then when you were on stage? Wow, you did such a good job. So tell all about how you experienced that. I was practicing my script, too. Oh, you had a script? Doing rehearsals, too. Oh. All right. The script was like all like the graduates, though, too. Like they're going to do their presentations, too. So you announced each of the graduates and they came up on stage. Yeah. And there was another person that did it. That did, you, did you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. And how long did it go? I'm not quite sure, but I'm it's, not like a time guy in general. Oh, I see. Okay. And you had another MC along with you yeah. that did the experience? That's yeah, awesome. That's I'm incredible. so glad. Yeah, it is. And one of the things that I noticed, Darian, this and Andrew, this was really um, amazing because I felt like, Koa, when you were talking, you have done so much on the Launch Buddies podcast and videos and things like that. You seem so comfortable speaking in front of a lot of people. Did you feel that way? And Darian spent a lot of time doing some public speaking as well. And it's difficult to get up on stage in front of people and just to feel comfortable and natural. But you really did. And it's a working progress, definitely, for sure. And yeah. you're really working your way up, Koa. And the fact that you're able to give that, that presentation, that you're able to read that script, it really just spoke volume. When you get your voice out there and you speak to all the students and everyone around you, it really makes a difference. The way you read the scripts and you get your voice out there, it really touches people in a very special way. I agree with that, too. And Koa, I wanted to find out from you a little bit more about how you prepared for that. Were you nervous before when you went into it? How did you help yourself calm down and feel comfortable and confident? Probably read a script out to keep practicing. Practice makes perfect too. That's true. I think I think you're right. And would you do it again? Yes, because I'm going to graduate next year too also because this is going to get me into 
doing my slideshow too next year. That's right. You're going to be able to tell about your plans for life after school. ATI. Right, which is an 18 to 21 transition program for young adults. And so telling about who you are, what you experienced in the program itself, and then what your plans are for work and for independent living, that's going to be really good for you to be able to present about your experiences and highlight your accomplishments. Yeah. Congratulations. And I'm glad that you were able to do that. What's your next step as far as trying to find a job in the future? Just doing internships in general. Okay. What's a, an internship that you're well, looking forward to? I'm looking for, I'm just still at Brightwater right now, though, and I'm finishing that up. What are some of the tasks that you do at Brightwater? I do weeding, and I do some sweeping inside, though, and then I do some, yeah. We're going to be talking a lot about job coaches and the support that is provided from job coaches. Do you have a job coach at Brightwater? What do they do for you? Do they Are they there with you all the time, or do they let you do your own thing? They let me do my own helping you be more independent. Yeah. Do you have a task list that you use or um, do you just remember the things? I just, I just remember at Brightwater. What and do. I know for me, when I learn something new, I like somebody to show me how it's done and maybe tell me some things, but really show me and then do it with me right alongside and then let me do it by myself. A three-stage process where I watch somebody do it, we do it together, and then I get to do it by myself. I learn best that way. Do you guys? I can relate to that because I'm very visual. If somebody tells me something, like it'll easily escape me. But when I'm shown, when I see things, like it, I catch on. Yeah. Time after time again, and then eventually, it comes naturally. So I function visually. So I can definitely relate to that. Anybody else relate to that, Andrew? Do you learn better from watching people? No, I have to do it myself. Okay, just right off the bat. Would you prefer if somebody tells you or if it's written down, which way works best for you? If they show me first, okay. and then I can repeat it multiple times till I get it. I love that. What about you, Koa? I, I like having a good task list, though. Yeah, sometimes things. being able to see it listed out and knowing all of the things that you need to accomplish, you can gauge where the start is and when the finish is going to happen, well, all the things in between as well. So I love having that task list to follow a visual schedule. All right. Thank you for that. And now we're switching gears over to Jay. Jay, we're so happy to have you here with us today. We're talking about jobs and how we grow into the job environment. Part of being an adult. Jay, how how did you get to where you're at today? Who helped you to get at the job you're at? I work for ages and my mom actually found it. She knows some people who work for Aegis, and she actually helped me found the job. And Aegis is what? What It's a retirement home. I work at the one in Kirkland. Aegis Lodge, actually, where it's assistant living. Okay. So people with dementia care or people with memory care, so those kind of elderly people. That's incredible. Where is this located? It's in Kirkland. That's awesome. Is that close to where you live? It's not that far. But do you get a ride there? Oh, yeah. It's very convenient. Okay. I'm curious to know what you do as far as your job there. I work in the activities director's department. And what are some of the tasks that they have you doing there? I work in the office down there. Okay. And some office work, Mm -hmm. right? Okay. And some of those tasks that you do specifically in the office, what are some of those things? I I do a lot. Okay. Tell us about it. I prep work, I organize, I also do work upstairs. I also do silverware, I line them up and I fold them in napkins and I put them in a bin. Nice. I also help out with activities and recently I've been doing that more. That's good. And my boss says someday I might lead an activity. That's That's incredible. See, Jay, when do you work throughout the day? I work on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so part-time. Wow, that's incredible. And our goal is for me to get a third day. Nice. And how many hours are you working right now? And then what do you want to build to? Four hours. But my goal is to get a third day, same hours. Very good. Okay, so four hours a day? Yes. I work from 12 to 4. Good. That's incredible. Jay, 
So why is this important to you? My job brings me pure joy. Really? Yes. So good. And I know it's the tasks and being able to contribute on the job, but also I'll bet it's about the people as well. Tell us about that. My boss is fantastic. She gives me a lot of support. And during my time when I had my surgery, she gave me a ton of support beforehand. So that kind of support, the specific things that you get from your boss, what are some of those specific things? She understands me and she knows my needs and she's, I could go on and on about her. She's the best. We love those bosses out there in the community that are so open and welcoming and understanding and accommodating of diff- different kind of abilities and skills. And and so thank you to the bosses out there and specifically thank you to Jay's boss for mm-hmm. being such an incredible employer. Her name is Brittany. Okay. And my coworkers are also amazing. I have became friends with them. Wonderful. And I bet they miss, they really do miss me when I'm gone. That's right. I'm sure they do. That's awesome. So, Jay, how do you want to continue on this journey? I plan on staying at ages as long as possible, probably till I retire. Whoa. I don't want another job. Okay. Because my job literally brings me pure joy. And my job coach has said they don't see that in a lot of jobs. No, it's really rare. I know that for sure. A lot of times people just, it's a shorter term kind of employment opportunity. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's seasonal. Maybe there are just other kind of barriers that happen in that longer term kind of employment. But you have found a place that is really rare and it's an amazing thing. We're so thankful for the opportunity that you have there. Do we have any other questions, Darian, that you can think of? At this point, or some encouragement for Jay as she continues down her journey. Jay, it sounds like you're on your way toward great success and you have a great community that you're surrounded by. And that's just, that's amazing. That really brings me joy as well to hear that you work in an environment where people understand you and give you support when needed. That's incredible. That's the kind of work environment that's worth being in. Absolutely. We want to encourage anybody else that's listening to just know that there are great opportunities out there, that there is hope for post-school opportunities and that supported employment, when done like it has been done right for Jay, that it's really powerful and life-giving and impactful for a life's journey. Don't be afraid to work around older adults just because they're really nice. And a lot of them have really interesting stories take it from my advice because the older adults i I work with are really nice right there's a lot of opportunity there with our aging population to be able to support them in a lot of different ways and so that's a wonderful career path that you've chosen that you've found and you can encourage other people to join in as well if that's a good fit it's not a good fit for everybody but But when it fits right, like it has for you, Jay, it's a beautiful thing. So thank you for sharing. I bring a smile to all all the residents' faces. Oh, I'm sure you do. Yeah, and you bring a a smile to our faces as well. Thank you for sharing today. You're welcome. And we'll talk to you next time. I'm loving this conversation so far. Now we are going to take a quick break to thank our sponsor, SDES, Functional Academics. Their unwavering support has been instrumental in making this podcast possible. Together, we're dedicated to empowering individuals with disabilities and helping them thrive in school and into adulthood. Enjoying the Launch Buddies podcast? We're all about celebrating the voices of self-advocates who bravely break down barriers. Speaking of brave advocacy, let's take a moment to recognize our sponsor, SDES Functional Academics. SDES offers a comprehensive curriculum, training, and consultation for students with disabilities. Their Steyer Fitzgerald Program for Functional Academics has been refined with input from educators and families, achieving great success in classrooms nationwide. As Launch Buddies, we understand the challenges of finding the right education. With SDES by your side, you'll feel confident and empowered to provide an exceptional education for every child in your program. Visit SDESWorks.com to learn more about the Steyer Fitzgerald Program for Functional Academics and make a real difference in your teaching. 
thank you SDES for your commitment to inclusivity and accessibility. Now let's dive back into our conversation that's so captivating with our amazing launch buddies. And we are back. Now let's jump back into today's topic and share our supported employment journeys, the highs, the lows, and the bold steps we're taking towards self-determination and self-advocacy. We're switching gears to our COA and Rice. COA, we know you're still in the ATI program, which is great for Rice, who is graduating and transitioning over to that same program. That's right. You know what? It's so funny because, Darian, you were past student. The Adults Transitioning to Independence program. A very past student. Yeah, 18 to 21-year-olds and the program after high school to prepare for jobs. So you're past, right? That's right. And Koa is present. He's currently in that program. And then Bryce's future. So past, present, future. We've got you guys right here. Amazing. Let's find out a little bit more about our experiences. Yes, Koa. I want to start with you. Tell me about your experiences. Throughout this transition, just learning how to do different kinds of variety of job tasks. That's right. You have a job coach that goes with you to different internships. And when you're at those internships, what do the job coaches do to support you? They somehow they like just tell me like, like we're going to do this or that. But mainly I work by myself, though, too, which is great. So it gives me a learning And they just make sure that you're doing the jobs the right way. Yeah. And that you're staying on schedule with the timing. I know you take the bus to get there. My job coach drives the van over to the job site. Oh, that's nice. You guys have a van for your program. And a car. Okay. Wow. But there are some opportunities in the program to learn the bus routes and when the buses come and how to get there, all of those things, we, recognizing We stops. use Google Maps, though, too, to get where we're going. Great tools to know how to navigate the community. That's really good. So you're talking about some things here that Bryce will be experiencing in not too long. Yes, Bryce. Bryce, where are you at right now? How do you feel on this journey of graduating from high school and transitioning on to the adulthood? I'm a little sad. You are. And I know graduation, the ceremony from high school is this Wednesday. Yep. So how are you feeling about that? You're not so it's sure, right. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just all right. Okay. And then you're going to have the summer to rest and relax and do some fun things. And then you'll be getting ready in the fall to go into your adult transitioning to independence ATI program. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be an innovation lab though, too. It starts there. Are, you're going into a different space? Yep. Yeah, the, because the, we're going to have a right. building. Wow. That's actually really exciting. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. Have you toured the new facilities? Have you gone there already, Bryce? Yeah. yeah? And what did you see when you went there? Did you meet some people that you'll yeah. be working with? Yep. Did you meet some teachers? Yes. Did you meet current students as well? Yes. Oh, nice. Did you have a good feel about it? Yes. Good. And did they talk to you also? I'm asking all the questions. I'm wondering about the specific internships that they've talked about that maybe you'll be doing. They haven't talked about any internships in general, just how it works. Okay, just the program components, the scheduling, what you can experience Mm -hmm. about. They have a morning shift and an afternoon shift, and those two kind of cross over in the middle for lunch for some socializing and just regrouping and Um, Some people in some groups are finishing, but then some are starting in the afternoon. So that's a really great setup. That's that's the shift I'm in. Are there things that you learn during your time there from the teachers? Do they teach classes about certain things? Yeah, you do class too, and it's really good though. What are some of the topics that are covered there? So we do like boundaries too, healthy relationships, how to take the bus too. Like they do a lot of stuff. Nice. Okay. Anything else that you want to say about that program and the support that you've gotten to prepare for work in the future? I just, all the all the wonderful teachers gave me good support to help me with work, the assignments too. That's nice. I love that there's support for the book work or the lectures or the lessons that you get. And then also you have a lot of job coaches. I think it's a three to one, three, mm-hmm. three people to one job no, coach or two. I think. 
So next year we're like going to narrow it down to three, though. Okay. That sounds great. And I know that there are some really awesome and helpful, wonderful paraeducators who are there supporting students as they go out into the community. So we're going to be excited to hear about how things go for Bryce in the fall. So we'll be catching up with him on our podcast later down the line. How does that sound? That's good. That sounds incredible. Thanks, you two, for joining us today. And we're going to switch gears here in just a little bit to find out about Andrew's experience in finding work in adulthood. And now we're switching gears yet again. We have Andrew and Sam who have just stepped into our studio. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hello. Hey. We are talking about transitioning into the adulthood and jobs. We want to know about your experiences finding work or if you have the job you're at and how you got there. Yeah. So who are we going to start with here? Let's start with Andrew. Sure. Andrew, so where are you at right now with your transition into adulthood and and job searching? I had a job at a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And how did you get that or find it in the first place? I had help from the state, Okay, which helped a lot. Was that a job coach or a job developer, an agency who was helping you? It was the agency DVR and I had a job coach. Okay. All right. So they identified some of your strengths or interests. I hope that's how they did it. Usually that's how it goes, focusing on kind of the things that you want to do. And then they found a warehouse job. Can you tell a little bit about that job specifically? Sure. I mainly just cleaned up things. I didn't really lift that much because I didn't have the licenses and stuff. Okay. And did you, you didn't lift things, but was it an organizational type of thing? Did you sweep or... Yeah. Tell about some of the tasks that you did. I swept the floors. I stacked boxes and crates. Did you feel like it was a pretty tiring job? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like it would be exhausting physically. Definitely. And so did you enjoy it? A little bit, but it wasn't the right fit for me. Okay. So and then you wanted to change to something else or it just didn't continue. Yeah. And then what happened? So I'm looking for a job right now and I'm probably going to do college instead. Okay. That's great. And what kind of study are you going for in college? What are you, what are you studying into? It's a OLS program. It helps people with disabilities okay. get jobs and life skills. And what stuff. do you know about it as you prepare to go in the fall? Hardly anything, okay. honestly. I know that you've done some tours, so you know what it looks like and you've met some of the people. So it'll be a little bit of, of an adventure to learn more about the types of classes that they have. But it, I think occupational life skills, yeah. occupational jobs and life skills, getting jobs. So I think what I know about it is they really help you move in that direction, the supports that you need to be successful. I'm excited to hear about how it goes for you and keep tabs on all of that journey as you go through it. And I guess, what is your dream job? Probably working with animals yeah. or like on the side, like doing forklift or that kind of work, like driving trucks and stuff. I think that would be amazing to do a job where you did heavy equipment, those kind of machines. Doing a forklift job kind of matches what you were doing in the warehouse. And that would be really, that'd be fun, I think. That would be, definitely. It sounds like you were focused on doing a lot of the active things in a job atmosphere. Yeah. I like that. That's really good. And that helps tremendously with organization, moving things around. And it really helps those around you at the same time. I think that's really incredible. Yeah, and just staying active physically is just mm. so good for you. There I you think go. that's I think that's a good plan for the future. You have some good goals and I'm excited to see what you're going to you're going to be doing in the future. I'm excited too. Good. Hey, let's let's talk to Sam as well. And you have some questions for Sam, Darian, right? I most certainly do. So Sam, where are you at with your transition and at your job right now? I'm almost done with Molbacks. That's right. You and have I'm an internship. I'm getting ready to say goodbye to people from Molbax. And then I'm working at Wanderlust Books. And then there might be in a couple of years where I might say goodbye to people. So you're in some job tryouts, some internships where you're just practicing some of those skills. And then you have already gone through. I know we've talked to you on the previous episodes on our podcast about your journey into Wanderlust I think you're going to have a job coach. What are some things that a job coach can do for you to help you? support for me. Right. 
They and can support you. And if I don't you. know a task, like I could ask a manager for help when That's I'm right. stuck on the same task. You can always ask for help when you don't know what to do. The manager's there. Right. You can ask I, a manager or a job coach or somebody I usually else. ask the manager. So sometimes when I'm learning the job skills, sometimes a customer and I'd say, do you know where this is? Oh, I might say, my name is, I'm, I'm learning job skills. You're just going to highlight for them that you're in the process of learning job skills and who you are. And then if you're stuck, you can ask somebody for help. Too. I'll ask the manager. Who's you learning can... job skills. I love that. That's important. This Good. was at me at Molbax. I was told by my job coach, I think he's learning job skills. Yep. Yeah. I know sometimes I go to different businesses and maybe there's a tag on the person, like a name tag that says employee in training. And you, so you can know that somebody's learning the job. And you have extra patience for people when you know that they're just learning the new job. Is that right? Yeah. And actually, on the week before Christmas, I usually write thank you cards and I usually say goodbye to That's people. really cool, Sam, that you are so grateful to people for the support that they give and you write thank you notes to them. I'll also bring my, th I sometimes bring my thank you card to my job water list when I'm done for the year because I'm wrapping up for Christmas. That's break. good. Good for you. And I come back in January. Yeah. Sometimes you take a break and you maybe go on vacation or you just take a holiday break. And then when you come back, you know, you start again. Yes. But I'm not really saying goodbye permanent. No, you're just taking a break. Sam, it sounds like you're on to amazing things. And it sounds like you have a wonderful community and a very great understanding of what it means to ask for support when needed. And that's important. And that's really good that you to do that. So that way it helps you grow and it helps the people around you to understand you better. And then you're able to help other customers on the floor. That's just, that's amazing. That's mind blowing for sure. Yeah. Yes. We want to say congratulations, Sam, on all of that you're learning for jobs in the future. And we're going to take a little bit of a break and we're going to transition and talk to our last buddy, Ari, in just a bit. Now we're transitioning over to Ari. Ari, we're so excited to have you here with us today. Yeah. Hi, we're Ari. How are you doing? And doing good. Good. Great. So, Ari, we're talking about jobs. How did you get to where you're at today? I had an interview and an orientation. And what type of place is it? It's a grocery store. That's nice. That's great. So you got your interview and you had a chance to talk to the manager there. And so did somebody help you with that? I had a job coach. Nice. And they were there with you during your, your interview? Yeah, in my orientation. Oh, nice. Okay. And have they been with you for the whole time? Are they still with you? They left. Okay. Why did they leave? Because I was independent. Oh, that's so good. That's the goal, right? Okay. So how long did it take you really before you felt like you could be independent? It took me like a couple months. Okay. So just for... A while, for several weeks, you had somebody there with you all the time, and then they faded out from you, right? Yep. Okay, that's so good. Now, when you learn new tasks on the job, will the job coach come back and help out? Like, the job coach has to come back when I do videos because I have to watch videos and I need help. In oh, okay. So there's some specific things that you need some support with. Very good. Anything else, Darian, that we want to ask Ari today? What do you do at your work, Ari? I'm a courtesy clerk, so what that means is I bag groceries, I do carts, and then sometimes if people need help carrying out their groceries to the car, I help them. That's awesome. That's incredible. What a great help you are to the store, and, and it's a really great job. Then you're going to be leaving that job soon, right, to go off to college. I'm going to be leaving at the end of July. Oh, I'm sure they're going to be sad to see you go. And I don't know if you'll be returning back to it when you come for breaks or whatever, but I would hope so. I would think that would be a really great opportunity. Actually, I'm going to do another job when I get back. Nice. What kind of job? I'm going to work for the Mariners. Whoa. That's like a dream job oh for my you. Goodness. Yes, it is. What type of work will you do for them? I don't know. So when I get back, I'm going to talk to a guy. Okay named Trevor, and then I have to see what I'm going to do. That is amazing. I'm very excited for you because 
you spend a lot of time watching games and you're very, very enthusiastic about the Mariners and you love that team in general. And so to get to work with them, that sounds like a dream job to me. It sounds like my dream job. Awesome. Thank you for today. Thank you for talking to us about supported employment and your journey. And we are going to say goodbye for today and and we'll switch gears and shoot some videos. Does that sound good? That sounds like a great play. That sounds good. Okay, you guys. We'll talk later.